One factor that holds pretty much constant across all human populations is our experimentation with psychoactive substances, or doing drugs. And while drug wars and legislation are uniquely human factors, drug use is actually very natural. After all, drugs wouldn't work if we didn't have the receptors for them within our bodies. And that's why we shouldn't be surprised when animals get in on the action. Of course, not all animals participate voluntarily, as Tusco the elephant or any lab rat can tell you. But today, we're talking about animals with intentional drug-seeking behaviors. Allow me to explain. You might not have expected inhalant abuse to be on this list, but I'll just come out and say it. Russian bears have been recorded huffing from barrels of jet fuel. Jet fuel, a mix of gasoline and kerosene also used in generators, has highly potent fumes. Exposure leads to dizziness, drowsiness, and a narcotic effect not unlike being under anesthesia. Actually, 100 years ago, gasoline was sometimes used for general anesthesia. It's a hard drug is what I'm getting at. Wilderness photographer Igor Spielenok experienced this firsthand when he and an intern had a close encounter with a brown she-bear looking for a fix. He had several barrels of fuel dropped off near his research station at the Kronotsky Nature Reserve in Kamchatka, Russia. Before they could bring the barrels up on back, the bear was all up on them, sniffing up a storm. Bears have also been recorded following helicopters around so they can sniff up any fumes left over on the landing zone. You can see the photos from these events on Spielenok's blog, linked below. Now, one of the most universally found psychoactive substances is, of course, alcohol. Tales of alcoholic animals go on and on, with stories of monkeys in the Caribbean stealing tourists' cocktails, or the tale of Chrysippus the Philosopher laughing himself to death when he saw a drunk donkey try to eat some figs. Scientists believe many of these stories to be greatly exaggerated. However, the fermentation process can occur in nature to a limited extent, such as in sun-ripened fruit and nectar. In this way, animals such as fruit bats, honeybees, and tree shrews can be exposed naturally. The alcohol consumption of fruit bats is fascinating because they are so resistant to it. In 2010, there was a study in which bats got drunk and tried to navigate an obstacle course. At the end, researchers concluded that our bats appeared to be behaviorally unaffected by ethanol. Bees, on the other hand, don't have the luxury of extreme tolerance. In a 2007 study in which bees got drunk, researchers concluded that, in comparison to vertebrate models, ethanol blood concentration was high and remained elevated for an extended period of time. When and if they make it back to the hive, they have new problems. First, one of their main methods of communication, the waggle dance, becomes very difficult for a drunk bee. And second, the other bees sometimes punish drunk workers by beating them up or chewing their legs off. Bee rehab is not a kind place. But nothing quite compares to the alcohol consumption of the pen-tailed tree shrew found in the Malaysian rainforest. These little guys consume alcohol on a nightly basis, contained in the nectar of a tree called the Burtum palm, which according to a fascinating 2008 study, has the highest levels of alcohol found in any natural food. Their average consumption over 12 hours is equivalent to 9 glasses of wine for an average weight woman. This amount should be more than enough to knock the shrews flat, and yet the flower-visiting mammals showed no signs of intoxication. Here's where things get really cool and also speculative. The researchers included a line in their study that blew my mind. The pen-tailed tree shrew is considered a living model for extinct mammals, representing the stock from which all extinct and living tree shrews and primates radiated. Therefore, we hypothesize that moderate to high alcohol intake was present early on in the evolution of these closely related lineages. Because we humans can trace our evolutionary lineage back to mammals such as this, it's entirely plausible that this could be where our heavy taste for alcohol started out 85 million years ago with our divergence from ancestral tree shrews. Now that's incredible to think about. There's disagreement among scientists as to whether or not animals actually enjoy being drunk. One study showed that male fruit flies have a higher preference for alcohol after a bad mating experience, but other studies suggest that many animals are disinterested. But regardless as to why they drink, there are many more booze hounds in the animal kingdom than you might expect. Let's kick things up a notch to hallucinogens. While LSD is a man-made drug, there are several species of fungi that produce naturally occurring varieties in this category. In the Canadian Rocky Mountains, there is a species of hallucinogenic lichen that grows on rocks that are rather difficult to reach. And yet, bighorn sheep, particularly young females, go out of their way, climbing dangerous outcrops to get at the stuff. 
They are so fervently involved in obtaining it that they have been seen to grind their teeth down to the gum line just to scrape off every speck. Are they really enjoying it that much? In order to better understand what the sheep are going through, let's turn to a human tradition, rock soup. Specifically, boiling a volcanic rock covered in a particular lichen in order to get high, sometimes called taking stones. Icelandic writer Smari Inerson described it as the most intense hallucinogenic experience that I ever had, and I've done every trip there is. A semi-anonymous Icelandic girl named Essa agreed, adding that you always come away from a stones trip with a question you had on your mind answered. It really makes you wonder what questions the sheep need answered so badly. Reindeer also indulge in hallucinogenic fungi, specifically mushrooms which grow abundantly in their natural grazing grounds. One mushroom, Amanita muscaria, is also used by tribesmen in Siberia in order to provoke feelings of ease, slight convulsions, the desire to sing and dance, and religious visions. Uniquely, the psychoactive substance in the mushroom called muscamol survives digestion and is excreted in urine. According to Philip Johann von Strahlenberg, a Swedish prisoner of war in Siberia in the 1730s, the Siberians would have big gatherings where a few people would ingest the mushrooms and then everybody else would eagerly await the opportunity to drink their urine. This was because there was less of a chance of becoming violently ill from drinking the pea than eating the mushroom directly. His story was later corroborated by others. And a man named Andy Letcher wrote of a reindeer herder he met, who at one point lived among the Sami people in Scandinavia and Russia. They would feed mushrooms to reindeer and then collect the urine to boil and drink. The herder said to Letcher, I took some when they passed it round. Well, you have to, don't you? They expect it. Anyway, I was high as a kite. There was an old 80-year-old grandmother with us, and I fancied her. That's how high I was. High as a bloody kite. So yes, you can officially get high on reindeer pee. And reportedly, reindeer will also seek out and consume human pee, thus completing this disgusting cycle. We've barely scratched the surface of animals that do drugs. But after spending all this time searching the internet for such things, all of my targeted advertisements are starting to mention rehab. So I think we'll let the matter rest here for now. Join me next time for additional reasons to add me to government watch lists. Oh, and share this video with anyone you know who isn't a bighorn sheep. They don't need to know that we're on to them. Monkeys be tripping.